This is the federal government's next $10,000 economic injury disaster loan grant. In this video, we're going to see who qualifies to receive it. As you may very well know, Congress has released the bill for the next disaster relief package, and it includes another round of economic injury disaster loan grants. What you may not know is that the federal government is allowing some businesses to receive the full disbursement of the $10,000 economic injury disaster loan grant. So. Here is the full text of the bill, and here's the section on the economic injury disaster loan advance for small businesses targeted. Just take a look at some definitions so you could put everything into context. Covered entity, it's for covered entities, the full dispersion of $10,000 grant. So that applies for a loan under Section 7B2, in other words, for the economic injury disaster loan. These are the requirements you have to fulfill in order to receive the full $10,000 economic injury disaster loan grant. Otherwise, you can still be eligible to receive an economic injury disaster loan grant at the $1,000 per employee or whatever amount is at the discretion of the Small Business Administration. It is located in a low-income community, and that's defined by IRS Section 45D. I, we'll take a look at that shortly so you can actually get an understanding as to what the federal government refers to as a low-income community, has suffered an economic loss of greater than 30% during an eight-week period between March 2nd, 2020 and December 31st, 2020, and employs not more than 300 employees. So, if you operate a business that is one in a low-income community that has suffered a revenue loss of greater than 30% during an eight-week period between March 2nd, 2020 and December 31st, 2020, when compared with an eight week period prior to March 2nd, 2020 or in 2019, and you employ less than 300 people, then you will qualify to receive the full disbursement of $10,000 economic injury disaster loan grant. And if you received only part of this $10,000 economic injury disaster loan grant, for instance, you received a grant of $1,000 per employee, you're a non-employee firm, according to the Small Business Administration, you received $1,000, then, you can request from the Small Business, Small Business Administration that they disperse the remaining $9,000 to ensure that you receive a full $10,000 economic injury disaster loan grant. In addition, if you have not applied for, excuse me, or you did not receive an economic injury disaster loan grant during the first round, then the, there's actually an extension for you to be able to apply for an economic injury disaster loan grant through December 31st, 2021. The House has also posted a summary of what's in the bill. So again, this is basically a summary of what I just told you. Repeats, provides additional targeting funding for eligible entities located in low-income communities through the EIDL Advanced Program. Let's just take a quick look at what is a low-income community so you can get an understanding. I don't think I'm going to qualify for this round, unfortunately, because I don't think my zip code is located in a is low-income according to this definition. The term low-income community means any population census tract if the poverty rate for such tract is at least 20%. In the case of a tract not located within a metropolitan area, if you're not in a major city, as long as the median family income for such tract does not exceed 80% of statewide median family income. In the case of a tract located within a metropolitan area, in other words, if you're in a major city, New York City, Los Angeles, etc., the median family income for such track, in other words, in your area, in your community, does not exceed 80% of the greater or statewide median family income or the metropolitan area median family income. So you have to take a look. If you live in a major city, if, you're, if the median family income for that your community does not exceed 80% of the greater or statewide median family income, then you may indeed live in what the IRS defines as a low-income community, you may be eligible to request from the Small Business Administration the full disbursement of the $10,000 Economic Injury Disaster Loan Grant. These are other definitions. I'll go ahead and leave links to all these titles and to the bill so you can go ahead and review it for yourselves and feel free to leave any comments and questions in the comments section below. Click the like button, click the subscribe button, click the bell notification to stay on top of everything that's going on with the bill. Congress is set to vote on this today. So, again, targeted populations. The secretary shall prescribe regulations. So if the secretary uh, prescribed regulations, like the secretary of the IRS, 
They may have their own rules for what is defined as a low-income community, areas not within census tracts, in the case of an area which is not tracted for population census tracts, the equivalent county divisions, shall be used for purposes of determining, determining poverty rates and median family income. So there's another definition for areas with, that are not within census tracts. Tracts with low population, a population census tract with a population of less than 2,000 shall be treated as low-income communities. So if there are less than 2,000 people in your community, then you may be in a low-income community. Is within an empowerment zone, with the designation of which is in effect under Section 1391, is contiguous to one or more low-income communities. So if you are on the border of, a, of one or more low-income communities and you don't have a population, then you may be defined as a low-income community community and you will be eligible to receive the full $10,000 economic injury disaster loan grant modification of income high so these are other definitions that you can go ahead and review on your own I won't get to into all of them the summary as you know also tells you about the $600 stimulus check survival checks that goes to individuals who make up to $75,000 families people who file jointly that make up to $150,000 according to their previous tax return. Children will receive a stimulus checks of $600 each, so a family of four can potentially receive a stimulus, will qualify to receive a stimulus check of up to $2,400. And for unemployment insurance benefits, you know that there's going to be, well, this, is, this actually gives you more information on the economic injury disaster loan grant. Let's go ahead and finish coverage on that. So again, as I told you before, extends the covered period for EIDL grants through December 31st, 2021, allows more flexibility for the SBA to verify that the EIDL grants have submitted accurate information and extends time for SBA to approve and disperse EIDL grants from three to 21 days. The good thing about this, so according to the CARES Act, the Small Business Administration, excuse me, the, the CARES Act actually gave small businesses the option to request remember it read it may request that the small business administration disperse a grant of up to ten thousand dollars within three days time nonetheless there was no mandate that the small business administration had to actually do that in this bill there is a mandate it reads that the small business administration will disperse an economic injury disaster loan grant within 21 days so whether you will qualify for the remaining amount of money to ensure that you receive the full $10,000 economic injury disaster loan grant or $10,000 or excuse me or an economic injury disaster loan grant at an amount that is under the discretion of the small business administration the small business administration will have to disperse that grant within 21 days whether you are approved or rejected for an economic injury disaster loan repeal section 110E6 of the CARES Act which requires PPP borrowers to deduct the amount so in the CARES Act, you would have to, according to the, pursuant to the CARES Act, you would have to have deducted the amount of EIDL grant that you received the Small Business Administration from the amount of money that you will be forgiven to pay back through the Paycheck Protection Program loan. Also, another thing is that through this bill, some EIDL borrowers will also have the opportunity to apply for a second round of Paycheck Protection Program loans. So... Repeal Section 1-1, which requires PPP borrowers to deduct the amount of their EIDL advance from their PPP forgiveness amount, establishes the sense of Congress that EIDL advance borrowers should be made whole without regard to whether those borrowers are eligible for PPP forgiveness. The administrator shall issue rules that ensure borrowers are made whole if they receive forgiveness and their EIDL was deducted from that amount. So, in other words, if you did not receive full forgiveness because your EIDL grant was deducted from the amount for which you qualified for forgiveness, then you'll go ahead and receive that money. The administration shall issue rules that ensure, so they'll come up with a way to ensure that you receive that money back. Flexibility and deferment of payment of 7A loans. So there was deferments included. And you know that there's uh, $300 a week in enhanced unemployment insurance benefits funded by the federal government, $100 a week in enhanced unemployment insurance payments for people who generate self-employment income, I believe I highlighted that part over here. No, this is the different tab. Is this it right here? Right here, yeah. So it provides a federally funded $100 per week additional benefit to individuals who have at least $5,000 a year in self-employment income, but are disqualified from receiving PUA because they are eligible for regular state unemployment benefits. This mixed earner supplemental benefit would be added to the FPUC and would terminate along with it on March 14th, 
2021. So these enhanced unemployment insurance benefits, they'll go on for an additional 11 weeks. Drop your comments in the comment section below. Watch this video right here for more stimulus and grant coverage. Click the like button, click the subscribe button, click the bell notification. I'll keep you updated with any new developments in regards to the voting and passage of this bill, which is expected by tonight. Talk soon.